Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics where we grow cool plants and today we're going to be talking all about bananas and specifically we're going to be talking about propagating bananas using their pups, um, also known as suckers. And what we're going to do is um, identify firstly the difference between the sword sucker compared to the water sucker or the water pup or the sword pup. Um, and to begin, you may notice that I've got this fairly large banana plant, which I just installed um, last year. You can see how tall that reaches up. This here is of the variety known as the Manzano banana. Also um, has a common name of apple banana. And I'm gonna show you three different varieties of bananas that we have here in the garden. And again, um, let me first um, distinguish and differentiate the difference between sword versus water. So let's start off with that. So. Here we are at the base of what's called the mother plant. This one here, the larger established plant is called the mother um, banana plant. And around it are the daughters, or sometimes also referred to as the daughter plants. So we've got sucker number one, sucker number two, and sucker number three, or the three different pups. But you may notice with the sword pup that the leaves are more narrow and longer than what we're gonna see next with the, um, with the water pup, which is gonna be coming up next. So, these are the sword pups, and again, between the sword pups and the water pup, these are the preferred starter bananas to be using to propagate more um, identical, genetically identical banana plants to the parent plant. Let's take a look at what a water pup looks like. Follow me. So now here we are at the base of our ice cream banana plant, and I've um, done quite a few videos on this particular banana plant. I'll put those video links down below so you can see all the different things we've done with it, but specifically the ice cream banana plant just behind me has two different types types of suckers the first one over here again is a sword sucker as you can see the leaves are quite narrow if you come in a little closer you can see how narrow these leaves are compared to the water sucker which is right behind it and take a look at how broad this leaf is and this leaf is so you can again see the difference between the water sucker and the sword sucker and if we were to go underground which is going to be the next thing we're going to do and compare the two different root systems you'll notice that the water sucker has an inferior root system compared to the superior root system of the sword sucker so let's um, get on with that and let's get back to our um, station so again here we are with the manzano banana there's one other smaller banana just behind me um, known as the goldfinger banana let me share that with you real quick before we get started if you take a look at this plant over here, you may notice on the leaves that it's coated with the white ivory organics. And we, when we um, transplanted this in the middle of summer, it was a very hot, warm summer day. And we basically coated it to keep the plant from burning in the sun. We use a product like this, which is ivory organic. It's a three-in-one plant guard where you spray it on your trunks, branches, and leaves, and it's protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. Ideal for newly installed plants and trees, for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, and it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And if you take a look here on the back, you can see that the active ingredients include castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil. All these oils that naturally help defend and protect the plant against um, insects as well as if there's any issues with rodents gnawing on your bananas, which I haven't heard of um, It could help protect with that as well. And while we're also here Let me share this avocado, which is right to my left as well And I just want to share with you that aside from spraying it on your plants You can also use it as a coat it comes in these cans where you can just um, add water to it again It's ivory organic 3-in-1 plant guard registered material for use in organic agriculture um, same active ingredients again the cedar I mean the castor, cinnamon, clove, cedar wood, garlic, peppermint, and rosemary oils. And, um, and this here, once, it's, um, once water is added to it, you can brush it on. And avocados and citrus are famous for um, you know, getting burned on those 90 and 100 degree days. Um, and it can also be used as a foliar spray, as you can see here on the leaves, that the leaves are going to help repel sun and hopefully um, you know, prevent sunburn so it can continue focusing on growth. And as you can see, it's going into bloom. But then again, this is the first year, and we're gonna to try to help um, get the plant to focus more so on growth and less on fruit production. So if it does hold on to any avocados in this first year, we're gonna to have to remove those so the plant again can concentrate on growth and height. Let's get started. A lot of you have asked, what is the best time of year to be 
um, removing the suckers from your banana plant? And the answer is it depends. Um, it could be almost any time of the year, but it's preferred to do it in spring. But there are conditions um, and exceptions to the rule. Uh, the reason for spring is, is that's when the banana's metabolism comes back to life. It basically took a break all winter and some of these bananas behind me are just putting out its first leaf and here we are now at the end of March and it had no leaves this entire rest of the year. Aside from the leaves that are on there which are from last year, the banana pretty much stopped producing new leaves which it generally does once a week throughout the growing season but from November until now the end of March all it's produced is this one leaf which just emerged just within the last couple of weeks. Um, but as the temperatures begin to continuously warm up and the nighttime temperatures get warmer, it'll put out a new leaf on average once a week with growth ranging anywhere from you know, a couple of inches to as much as a foot. Um, so the growth of the banana is gonna continuously increase throughout the, growing, um, throughout the growing season. Now the exception to the rule with removing the pups is if there are any bananas on your plant, then I do not recommend you remove the suckers until after the bananas are harvest, harvested so you don't put the parent plant into any type of shock. Removing the suckers will compromise the health of the parent plant some, so you got to take that into consideration as well. Before we begin, um, I want to show you some of the tools that I brought out with me today. You'll notice that I've got here my, uh, my pruners, I've got some paper scissors, I've got um, my hand tool over here, and then a couple of sized shovels in the back. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna clean up some of the dead leaves that are around the banana plant. So to do so, all you actually need are your paper scissors and not your branch pruners um, like, like these over here. With your paper scissors alone, you'll be able to remove any of these dying branches. And I wanna get these out of the way so I can see what I'm working with. And you can see you can simply just cut right through like so. And we'll do another for demonstration purposes. No reason to remove this green leaf, but I'm gonna do it again for demonstration purposes to show you how easily you can cut through that leaf using just your paper scissors. Let me do a couple more just to demonstrate. Here we are now next to our Goldfinger banana. You can see that there's another dead leaf. Um, again, this is now the end of March. These are some of the leaves that didn't make it through winter. And we're just going to cut through like that. And now the banana is you know, looking a lot more beautiful with all of its green leaves. And this here is the one leaf that it put out so far um, this year. And it just came out in the last couple of weeks. Let me show you one more example. So you can even see when I'm 15 feet off the ground and take a look at those bananas over there to my right. Those are the ice cream bananas, which um, went into bloom back in August of 2016. And again, here we are now at the end of March 2017 is still waiting for those bananas to ripen. Um, again, the metabolism of the plant shuts down entirely during the winter months, um, and so we're expecting ripening to happen again as the days continue to warm. So here we are again with our paper scissors, and you can see how easily you can prune even the largest of banana plants. Let's continue. And so now we're gonna clear away around one of these suckers. We're gonna start off with the sucker that's um, here behind me. This is a perfect sword sucker again, I, you know, defined as having those narrow leaves um, compared to the water suckers which have those broad leaves. Um, and again, the, the sword suckers also have a better defined root system than the water sucker. So it's the preferred way to propagate more parent plants. To reiterate, the best time of the year for doing this process is early spring, but again, the condition is if the plant has fruit on it or is going into bloom, then it might not be the best time. And actually, it's preferred to wait until those fruit are harvested and then remove those suckers if it's the desired goal to remove those suckers. But while there's flowers or fruit on the plant, that additional stress may compromise the success of um, the fruit that are on your banana plant. Um, so again, the preferred time is spring, and then when it comes to preferred time of day, the second half of the day is preferred over doing it in the morning where the plants will be more stressed and susceptible to sun stress. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So let's get started. So the first step here is I'm gonna make sure that I um, clear a little way around the sucker. So I'm just gonna remove some of these wood chips that I've got around the plant. This one here is called the amaryllis. Um, color red. These will be blooming um, shortly. These typically bloom a little bit later in the year. 
and these are just some other bulbs that are around my banana plant. But let's work our way around it. And the goal is to get as close as you can to the parent plant. And the goal again is we're going to try to separate the pup from the parent plant with minimal damage to the parent. If I were to come in and try to separate the pup from the parent, I would compromise more so an error in the direction of harming the pup over harming the parent plant. So now you can see these are some of the roots that are coming off of mostly the pup. You can see that here. I'll, come, I'll dig a little bit deeper around it so you can see this. But here are some roots that are starting to be exposed. We've got We've got some life here in the soil. You can see with this earthworm, there's some smaller ones down here as well. You can see wiggling around. Um, when it comes to soil health, the goal is to continuously feed your um, banana plants, especially during the growing season, being um, early spring and summer with organic fertilizers, which will continuously feed the earthworms and nematodes, the beneficial bacteria um, and beneficial fungi that naturally live here in the soil. Um, now that I've cleared a little way, what I'm now going to do is just take my shovel here and I've got a small one and the goal is to basically now separate the pup from the parent plant like so. Basically dividing that in between. I'm going to go with a little pressure here with my shoe on it. There we go. I pretty much cut most of it. You can see I'm starting to pull back. I'm going to break a little bit more into it. You can see how easy that is. And then we're just going to press away from the parent and out it comes. And take a look here. So we pull this out and you can see here we got a couple of roots like so. And we'll repeat the process now with the others. So you can see here, this here is the parent plant and we remove the sucker right off the side with very little to no compromise going into the parent root. These initial starter roots will be all it will take to create another um, banana plant. Let's go and continue the process with these other two suckers around it. Let me replace the soil back in its place. I'm gonna backfill that. And continue the process. Here we go. So here I am just removing the wood chips around the sucker. You can see we've got a nice healthy layer of wood chips. Um, take a look at some of this white mold that's growing on these wood chips. And this is um, identification of mycorrhizal fungi. And if you can come in a little closer, you may even see some of the hairs that are coming off of this white mold as well. And again, this is all helping with the breakdown of the wood chips, which is returning those minerals from those wood chips back into the soil and feeding the soil biology. So let's continue to keep pulling that back. And the goal is to expose some of the roots so I can get a better idea and come and take a look at the life that's in here in the soil. Take a look at that earthworm right here. And there's more than just earthworms here in the soil. We're talking about there's going to be beneficial um, fungi, beneficial bacteria, um, beneficial nematodes, all of which are breaking down the organic material that's here in the soil and returning those nutrients back into the soil. That's another reason that it's important to fertilize your plants three times a year. That's going to be spring, summer, and early fall to help bring all of those elements back into the soil to continuously feed your banana plants. Once we've cleared away and we can kind of identify where the sucker is coming off of the parent plant, we're then gonna come in with our shovel here. And we're just gonna bring that in like so, right in between the two. And when I come down, my goal is to not take away much, if at anything, away from the parent plant. My goal is to remove simply the sucker. So here we go. I've started breaking away. You can hear all of those tissues being broken. 
I'm gonna pull away. I'm now gonna go with my larger shovel and continue down that same path. Here we go. We just severed now the sucker away from the pan plant. Now we're gonna pull back. See what we've got here. Take a look at all those roots that we got. And these will be the roots that'll then support our new banana plant. And let's pull that out and put it on the side here next to the other one. And now we're gonna do the third. Trying to get right in between the two. And put in more pressure, there it goes. And then we pull back. I can tell we got a lot of roots with this one. Check this out. So here we go. And you can take a look, we got some more roots that came off. This here is the prune surface. We got a couple of starter roots. We've got a nice young banana plant. Then we can stack that right here like so. Immediately, we're gonna backfill this exposed surface and close that all up. And we're gonna break that all down. Break down any clay pieces, mix that back in with the wood chips. And while we're still focusing on the parent plant, I'm gonna put a little bit of organic material added to the soil um, to help invigorate it, in, invigorate and get it to grow a little bit more um, and to compensate for all the stress that we just added. Um, let me show you a couple of products we're gonna add to the soil. So here's a couple of products that I picked up um, that were in my garage. One is made by Dr. Earth. Um, the focus on this one is these numbers. If you can come in a little closer, you can see it 3% nitrogen. 9% phosphorus and 4% potassium. It's very important to have very high second and third numbers and if they're even, it would be even better. 3% um, nitrogen is um, focused on growth. We do want to make sure that it's got a lot of phosphorus to support the flowers and fruit as well as potassium, which is another important ingredient for um, banana health. I've got this product and here's another one as well, made by Espoma. And I like this one a little bit better because those second two numbers are more balanced. Again, it's a low nitrogen, 3%. And then phosphorus, potassium, 4% and 4%. Um, when it comes to ingredients, when it comes to using organic material, I want to show you what some of these products are like. Um, if I can show you where the ingredients are. And it shows over here, derived from. And you can see it's derived from feather meal, poultry manure, bone meal, alfalfa meal, green sand, sulfate of potash and sulfate of potash magnesium. And let's take a look at what's on here as well. Um, let's try to see where this one is derived from. Here it goes, derived from um, fish bone meal. This one is different than the Espoma product. Bone meal, alfalfa meal, potassium sulfate, feather meal, kelp meal. So kelp is also an added, um, and kelp flour. So this product is derived from some different sources as well. But what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of both and hopefully have it benefit more elements than what it would have otherwise received from just one. And whatever the recommended dose is, I'm only putting about half as much, and I'm gonna be fertilizing this monthly now throughout the growing season. And I usually do it the first week of every month. And I'll alternate between some liquid feeds as well as what I'm using right now is a granular organic fertilizer. Here we are, and now we'll just cover it with some more wood chips as well. And the last and most important step is water it a lot. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And I'll continue watering the plant for at least the next five to 10 minutes. The goal is to soak the plant as much as you can. And all of the leaves that we pruned off the bananas, we're gonna return all of that benefit back into the soil by simply um, cutting down these leaves at the base of these banana um, plants. So I'm just cutting these into smaller pieces. 
That one was brown. This one here is still green. But we can just cut those into smaller pieces. And what's going to happen now are the snails and the slugs and the saw bugs and all of these insects are going to come, including the earthworms, are going to come and start consuming this material and returning those nutrients that went into producing these leaves back into the soil to now benefit this parent plant. Let's get on with it. Until I can find a home for those banana plants, I'm going to keep them in containers. Um, and once you put your plants in a pot, it's important that you use potting soil. It sounds obvious, but many people get this wrong. And they'll use simply compost, or they'll even use, um, this one here is a grow mulch, but it's lacking on ingredients that would otherwise be in your potting mix. And potting mix typically has sphagnum moss and perlite and vermiculite. And these ingredients that better retain water so that it can um, continue to sustain the life that's in the pot. But simply using compost only or native soil doesn't retain enough water to keep your plants happy and healthy in a container type lifestyle. And vice versa, do not use pot potting soil if for your in-ground plantings as well. Doing so will attract too much water if it's in the ground and cause um, diseases such as root rot to any plants that are planted in potting mix in your in-ground plantings. So for now what we're going to do, since it's going to live in a pot, is we're going to use potting mix and this one here is um, made by Vigoro. You can see it's an organic and natural um, potting mix. We're simply going to put some potting soil here at the bottom of the container, like so. You can see I filled up the bottom third and then we're just going to come here with our banana plant. You can see those roots that we've got and we're going to put those here in the container like so. And then we're gonna go above, right here is where the ground level was before. We may even go about an inch or two a little higher, which is okay when it comes to banana plants, whereas with other fruit trees, that could cause what's known as stem rot. But it won't be an issue with this banana. Here we go. So we're just going to secure that in place like so press the soil. There's no reason to really fill this up to the container. It's only going to live in this container for about the next month or two. In the meantime, to, because it's got a very minimal root system, it's advisable to also remove some of the leaves so you can also reduce the stress that the plant has to support. So we're going to remove some of the leaves like so. Even though they're green and healthy, we can also prune these leaves in half. It's important to keep some leaves as these leaves will continue making sugars to help support the root system as well. So I'm gonna cut the remainder of these leaves off in half like so. And then the last step is we're gonna take our product here. Ivory Organics, a three-in-one plant guard. And the goal here is protection against damaging sunburn. The goal is we wanna keep the plant a lot cooler. So we're just gonna shake this here. And if you wanna stand back so you don't get any spray on you, and I'm just gonna spray these leaf surfaces with this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard and then I'll have you zoom in so you can see what I just did. If you come in over here on this side, let me spin the plant, you can take a look here on these leaves, you can see it's now coated with an organic film to help reflect some excess sunlight. And what we're going to do next is we're going to position it against this wall and the plants get very minimal sunlight if they're lowered down here on the wall. So we're just going to I like positioning the plant a couple of inches into the ground. That'll help keep the, um, the root ball moist a little bit better than if it was standing on a patio ground or on a wooden deck. By being in the ground about an inch, it will actually attract some moisture. So here we are now on our third pup. I just planted those two pups behind me and we're now gonna continue with adding some more potting soil to this container. And you can see again, I just filled up the bottom third. I'm now gonna add the pup to the container and then continue filling around the plant. I'm just gonna tap it gently around. And then now because it has a limited root system, we're gonna remove some of the leaves, but we're going to leave a few. And the few that are remaining, I'm going to cut those in half. 
and that will reduce the surface area for desiccation or drawing out of the plant again so that the minimal roots can support what little leaves are left. I'm then going to go again with the Ivory Organic Spray and just cool off the remaining plant. I can cover the leaves and even parts of the stem as well to help keep it a little bit cooler when the sun comes and visits it tomorrow morning. I'm now going to go back over here with the other two containers and I like to position the um, plant about one to two inches into the ground. And the benefit of that again is it's gonna help get the moisture from the soil into the container and the water that comes out of the container is gonna go right back into the soil as well and help keep that root ball more moist than it otherwise would be. So by applying this method, it's gonna help get the water that goes into these containers back into the soil immediately and the moisture that's in the soil is gonna return back into those pots as well and help me with those in-between watering days. The next step is simply water. And I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I soak each of these containers with as much water as I'll take. And I can even water around it as well near the base. discussed earlier there's the sword sucker or the sword pup and the water pup the water pup is usually an inferior root system and typically has less vigor than what the sword pup will, will create for you if you're looking to propagate more of your um, parent banana plants but if you do propagate your water sucker and that's all you've got are water suckers I still encourage you to do the same method that we just did but keep in mind that it's gonna lack the vigor and it's probably gonna be one of those water sucker pups, but it's probably going to be one of those suckers that are going to come off of your water pup or your water sucker that's going to end up creating the sword sucker that's going to have the vigor and the strength and the energy to then dominate to create what's going to ultimately become the parent plant or the, the, the fruit bearing plant. So let's review what we did over there again. Follow me. With the remaining leaves that we got now from those um, new pups and those suckers, we're going to just simply put those back around the parent plant, like so. And as we explained by doing so, if you come and take a look, what we've done is we've now created a bed for all of the soil organisms, which include the earthworms, the nematodes, the beneficial bacteria, as well as the snails and slugs to come and consume it, return those elements back into the plant, and continue feeding the um, banana plant so we can hopefully enjoy nice, organic, healthy, and delicious, and nutrient-rich bananas. So first there was one, one Manzano, or also known as the apple variety of bananas. Take a look. And now after propagating the pups, we've got three. I hope you've enjoyed this educational moment from Ivory Organics, and if so, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all of these other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.